Welcome to this, our live DataSpark demo on vehicle routing optimization. I'm joined by Dr. Kiko Rulan, who's a senior data scientist at DataSpark and has been working on these types of optimization projects for large logistics companies over the last year. I'm Jeremy Bradley, chief data scientist at DataSpark, and I've been working on various industrial flavors of the vehicle routing problem for over seven years. Kiko, very warm welcome. Can you start by giving us a flavor of what vehicle routing optimization is and why it's so important? Hi, Jeremy. Uh, yes, the vehicle routing problem tries to model the delivery of goods within a network. And this problem has been drawing more and more attention as delivery ne networks have grown more complex, introducing more nodes and a various set of constraints. So I believe you've got a nice demo for us. Would you like to uh, give us a flavor of how vehicle routing optimization works? Yes. So at DataSpark, we've been building this, this site, which is called PlayML, that contains various demos for several models. And in our case, we've looked at uh, building one for the vehicle routing problem, and we have it here. In this problem, as we said, what we're trying to do is optimize set of deliveries from a depot or multiple depots. In our case, we have a single depot, which is denoted here in, in this with this black square, and we have 29 delivery locations. Our intention is to visit all locations while minimizing the distance traveled. This is also linked to another problem called traveling salesman problem. Mm -hmm. And our constraint here is that we can't make an arbitrary number of stops in our way because the vans that are delivering to this set of locations have a limited capacity and therefore we can only allocate, let's say, one, two, three, four parcels, etc. Mm -hmm. So if we look, if we try to solve this problem, and you can see that this is a tiny problem compared to the ones that we can find in industrial applications, but even with this tiny problem, brute forcing all combinations is, is going to take a very long time. In fact, there's no way we can brute force all combinations. So what I'm showing here is the solution that our solver has come up when the number of stops that we allow the van originating from the depot is at most one. And as we change and as we move the slider, this slider that indicates the maximum capacity, as we move this slider, we are going to allow more and more stops. So this is the solution for two stops, three stops, four stops, etc. So this is three stops or four stops for each vehicle. Yes. So you can see that as we increase this number, we start observing how our solver is capable of grouping together the sites that are close by. So th this is something that, that is quite intuitive. We are doing routes, we are building uh, routes that gather sites that are close together. Another interesting thing that we can look at is what is our travel distance as a function of this maximum capacity in our van. This number is specified in miles, so we start with 300 miles and we reduce the number as we increase the capacity, which is something that is quite intuitive because, in fact, increasing the capacity is relaxing the constraint. So it's giving you more ability to load more packages, do more deliveries with one van or with many vans, and as a result, you can get more complex routes and more optimized routes into your solution. Correct. Yeah, there are a set of constraints that typically apply to this problem that in, in our case we are omitting here. But the, the truth is that the solver that, that we've built can handle a variety of constraints that are present in, in the real application, which are, for example, the time delivery windows or the maximum driving time for drivers or the maximum load for vehicles, which is abstracted here, or the maximum size of vehicles within a particular site. So all these constraints that actually occur in, in reality and that a, a solver that pretends to minimize resources for solving the problem has to take into account. So this is a bespoke solver that's based on 
open source research, but why does bespoke solution of these problems work so well for industrial applications? Yes, I think this problem, the vehicle routing problem, is a problem that is very complex, that cannot be solved analytically and that needs to solve via optimization. And this means that having the capacity to incorporate the constraints in a very tailored and in a very personalized way is a huge advantage because a commercial soft software might be capable of implementing a certain set of constraints, but having the capacity to flex them a bit and to push to the limits where these constraints actually are hard or soft is a huge advantage. And I think this is what we are bringing here. We are bringing a solution that is both up to the, the state of the art of the techniques that are, are used in the commercial software, but at the same time is flexible enough to adapt to the particular constraints uh, for a specific logistics company. Kiko, thank you very much. That was really interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you.